Hey everybody, welcome to church with us here online. As we celebrate our freedom as a nation today, we also celebrate our freedom. For the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We invite you, be free today. Let's lift our praise together as Amy leads us. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
banner, my song will ever be. Jesus, you are my victory. In every heartache, we have a healer. God ever present, He sees me. We have an anchor His steadfast love will never change Today, we celebrate a God who comes to fight alongside of us in every battle. I want us to look at this verse. It says this, and he shall say to them, hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Only do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And that same promise that was made to God's people back in the Old Testament, Jesus said in the New Testament, in this world you will have trouble. We're all facing a battle. But he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And so right now, God, I thank you that no matter where we're watching this from right now in this moment, no matter what battle we're facing, that you are the God who comes alongside to fight with us for victory, to save us. And we just declare victory. We declare freedom over every person today right now watching this. And we thank you 
for your promised victory in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That is the truth and that is the good news that we get to share today. Thank you for worshiping with us. We want to welcome you to our online worship experience. If you are here today for the first time, we want to invite you to go to eccc.us slash online and just fill out that information. Let us know who you are, that you're with us today. You're part of our family. And then if you have anything we can pray for, we would love to pray for you. And uh, so please make yourself available to do that. And now Pastor Dan is going to share a message from God's word. So let's prepare our hearts to hear from the Lord. Everybody, we're going to take communion together. I know that I've missed this as, as doing this with my family and friends, uh, all of you that are online, at home, wherever you're at. Uh, the, the, the host has encouraged you to get the elements. It could be anything. There's nothing legalistic or, or laws about what these things should be. Basically, you need, need some liquid and you need some uh, cracker dough, bread, something of that nature. But we're going to use those, and those are symbols of some very important, powerful things, and one of the very few symbols that have been left to us to remember what Jesus has done for us. And so we're going to look at it in 1 Corinthians, it's chapter 11. It says, uh, Paul was speaking, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He did that at what was called, and many of us are familiar with, the Last Supper scene. He sat down with his disciples, and they took bread and wine together. And then he said, when he'd given thanks and broken it, that is the bread, and we do thank you, Lord, for it, and we do break it right now. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's take the bread, and as we do, let's remember Jesus and the sacrifice he made. Thank you, Lord. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's remember the blood he shed so that we might be forgiven. Let's take the cup together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Father, thank you for all that you are and all that you've done through your son, Jesus Christ. May he uh, just be glorified. We give him thanks and honor for all that he has provided for us. And we thank you for his love and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody from East Coast Christian Center, this is Pastor Dan here. So glad you could join us. Now, you could be joining us in a couple of different places if you're joining us from your home. God bless you. I hope that you're sharing this with your neighbors and friends. Campuses as well, you can share it with your neighbors and friends. Number one, easiest way, I've been, I've been preaching the gospel for 40 years and giving somebody 
a share and putting it on Facebook and sharing. I do a lot of texting to family members and I text them the, the, the online message. And so I just want to encourage you, get involved in doing that process. But we're glad those of you that are here right now, we welcome you. If you're from East Coast, awesome. If you're a guest of someone else, awesome. If you're brand new to looking at the broadcast and you're here with us, awesome, awesome. I don't know. I just, I'm out of awesomes now, so don't worry about it. I won't say that anymore. But I want to pray before we get started. It's a great weekend. It is a 4th of July weekend, and uh, we, we, we need the Lord today as much as we've ever needed the Lord in the United States of America. The Bible says in God, excuse me, the, our money says in God we trust. The Bible says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And those are the things that are, that are important to us this season. Father, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for who you are. We humble ourselves, just like Pastor Matt shared the verse last week. We come to you in a position of humility. We stop and we pray and say, God, forgive us of the things we're doing and have done and maybe even are planning to do wrong. God, we need your mercy and your grace. We need forgiveness from heaven. And we need more than any of that in the season that we're in right now, in the crazy political, the crazy social season, racial, anything you want to put on there as a title, season that we're in right now as a nation. We need you, God. We need you moving. We need you working. We need you doing. And I want to just say right now, I believe you are. And I believe many, many times that incredible things come out of crisis, come out of difficult times. And I believe that you have prepared for us good works for us to walk in as the United States of America. And I pray your blessing on every person. And I am thankful for this nation and all that you give us here and all that you provide for us here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And also help with the message. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, God bless you guys. Good to be here with you on this 4th of July weekend. Um, our main verse today, what we're going to use, is found in 2 Peter, it's chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, and it says this, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So we've got this thing going here, main scripture. What are we talking about? We're talking about this. You got this. We're actually not talking about just this. We're actually going to talk more about you than this but you've got this this is a sign we have around our community one of the ones signs of hopes we put up signs of hope we put up and uh when i looked at it, i first looked at it and i thought to myself if i was struggling and maybe I, you know somebody uh that was kind of a little bit antagonistic in my life which could be anybody if i'm in a bad mood if i'm to be honest but uh and and i was struggling at something and they said to me you got this it might even make me a little bit frustrated or madder. But if someone who deeply loved me and cared about me and was invested in me being successful with an encouragement said to me, you got this? Man, it would have a, a whole different effect in my life. And I want to just talk a little bit about God. And, and I believe he is saying to us and reminding us today, you got this. And so I want to I wanna go a little bit deeper. So how do we get this all together? It's interesting it says in this verse that his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things. So he has done it, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But, but how, do I, how do I get this right? Well, I believe the first way we get this right is found in Matthew 6 33 it says but seek first the king of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you what things well if you put it in context in the verse here it, it Jesus when he's telling the story is talking about clothing and food and in the society 
he was in that represented everything in a person's life, the very primary things that a person needs. We all need health. We all need finances. We all need peace. We all need security. We all need those things. And he was speaking specifically about food and clothes. And then he says, don't, don't do this like the Gentiles do it. Now, he's not picking on Gentiles, but really in that case, he's saying, don't do this like people who don't believe. Don't do this like people who don't follow me. Don't, don't choose to live your life with the mindset of what everybody in the world has. He goes on to say, uh, be more, we're different. He's, he says, be more like the birds of the air. They don't, they don't, they, they just don't worry. They, they go through their, their day and in their day, God has placed in this world all the things birds need to live, survive, and thrive. And so they just go and receive and, and pick up and, and, and build whatever God has for them from the earth that they live in. And then he, then he used the example of flowers. Flowers just grow and every bit of sustenance they need comes from the soil and the moisture they need comes either from the dew or the rain that falls from the sky. He says, I want you to live like that. But, but the key here, he says, is seek first the kingdom of God. And I wanna, I wanna use this as an example over here if I could. And this, is a, let's, this just represents our life. And these represent things, both these big stones and all these little stones represent the things. And so this is what he says here. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. So it's, here's what I want to share. Priority creates capacity. Priority creates capacity, what I mean. So, so if you've got all these little things in your life here, and, and, and then a few big things, and then you put, try to put the big things in when, when there's all those little things in, and then you try to get those in. It's very difficult to fit the big things in this jar if the little things are first. What's the scripture say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we'll just say, God, he's a... He's the biggest stone, by the way. God would just say, you know, uh, uh, the scripture and, and prayer, if you, if you do those first, see, the, the, this way there wasn't the capacity, but this way, the amazing thing is, if you take care of the big things first, you put those in first, what happens is you end up, let me do a little shaking here, oh yeah, a lot of shaking going on, um, the capacity is there for this to fit. The lesson I want to take from this today is if we'll get our priorities right, if you'll get God first, if you'll put Him first, put His Word first, put prayer first, put your relationship with other believers, get all the God stuff first, all the other stuff just follows along. It fits. Why? Because priority creates capacity. So let's put him first and let's believe what he said is true. And because of that, I want to say you got this. And so um, I do want to say a little bit more about God before I get this going. Everything I share today is totally based on the truth that God and God alone has done it in our lives. It was his idea to do it this way. It's by his power that it works this way. His word instructs us in this truth that I'm going to share with you. It's not mental gymnastic or human accomplishment, but this is God-centered and because of Jesus, period. You got this because Jesus is our sufficiency. That's what I'm trying to get across to you today. So, and, and though we know that, and we can say amen to that in this setting, maybe in your living room or at the campus or, or here where we're at right now, you could say amen to that. But the truth is, there are times in our lives we all have maybe moments and occasionally days, weeks, years of something not feeling right, being right, uh, being discouraged, sick, lonely, whatever's going on in your life, and... and uh, Hopeless, when we're talking about getting some hope, signs of hope, we can all be there for a while. But what you must know is as a believer that is following Christ, your life goes way beyond feelings and what the world is throwing at you. 
You can't just go by what you're experiencing out there. Uh, so I want to take a hope-filled journey through the Scripture here in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes that we have and show you some incredible things. Do you know that you are, I, I love the old King James, I recommend all you young people that have all these new translations is at least read the old King James in the New Testament at least once in your life. I think you're missing out on, on something if you don't. It's very poetic, very, uh, it seems to me easier to memorize and uh, I read all sorts of translations and my favorite is New King James which I'll quote from today, but Old King James is pretty special uh, sometimes and, and, and is pretty life-giving. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 4 through 6 says this, We have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves. Now listen to this. But our sufficiency is of God who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Some, some translations say as able ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, uh, but the spirit gives us life. Here's what I want to say to you. I believe that we have everything we need in Jesus already provided for us and and that means regardless of what the natural facts circumstances are telling you the truth is that God has already given you whatever you need that's right I said it he has already done it and you already have everything you need in Jesus back to the scripture we started with I'm not even giving these people a chance to say amen I'm going so fast come on Whoop. can I get an amen there we go. Take a break here. Um, Second Peter, and this is, this is King James, just briefly. Uh, chapter 1, verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath, hath, H-A-T-H, hath given us all things. Let me read it from the, from the, from the New King James, and I'm going to go back to verse 2, not start at 3. Verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, as his divine power has given to us all things. Wait a second. His divine power has given to us. Has given to us. Doesn't say will, will give to us. It says has given to us. It's not future tense. It's not even present tense. It's past tense. And that's my entire English knowledge. I'm just not an English guy, but I'm smart enough to see. That's past tense. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Has given. Most Christians believe that God can do anything. How many Christians in here believe God can do anything? But the problem is, even though they believe God can do anything, most Christians have trouble believing he's actually really done much of anything. I know that's tough, but they live, people live in a constant state of trying to get God to do something. God, give me wisdom. God, heal my body. God, do this. God, do that. God, they just live their life doing that. They're begging God to move. And it might be through revival, or it might be through healing, or it might be through something financial. It might be a relational issue. It might be a lot of different God, oh God, oh God, oh God. But the truth is, if we read this correctly, they've already got what they're asking God to give them. Got what? He has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I believe this is literal. Hang in here with me. I, I think it's interesting that it says that pertains unto life and godliness. I believe it covers life, the one I'm living here in the natural, and godliness, the spiritual side of my life as well. God has provided, already provided uh, for us. That, let me take it a step further. Ephesians 1.3. Old King James says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, hath, H-A-T-H, -H, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. New King James says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, has blessed us, past tense, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We already have. Everything we need, where's it at? In Christ. 
So, okay, well, that, that's the problem. I got to go over there and get it. No, wait a second. You have to go over there and get it because if it's in Christ, the good news is you're in Christ. And the scripture is so full of truth on that. I don't have time to do a, a message on in Christ, but there are literally over a hundred verses in the New Testament that say you, as a believer, are in Christ. Just a couple. Uh, the verse right before where it says, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in, in the heavenly place in Christ, verse 4 says, just as he chose us in him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blame before him in love. Uh, the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. There's a lot of verses that way. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That means it's already done. You already have every spiritual blessing you will ever need in Jesus. So this is a wild part. So asking God... Asking God or waiting on God to bless you with something he's already provided is counterproductive. See, here's, here, I'm going to go so far as to say it, it actually demonstrates unbelief. When you ask God to give you something he's already provided you, you are proving you don't believe you have it. Now, if you can get this, I'm, I'm here today to say, if you can get this, if you can wrap your mind, because this is hard, because we, we don't live this way or think this way. This is not natural. The kingdom of God is an upside-down kingdom. The humble are in charge. Come on. You know, uh, when you give away, you have more. When you free somebody else, you become free. Uh, it's an upside-down kingdom, so you, but you've got to get your mind around this because this is so important. So, so instead of uh, starting from a position of trying to get God to move, like, for example, you know, if you're sick, you, you start praying, God, I, I, I really don't feel good. Uh, this is a season where that is uh, more likely in many ways with the, with the COVID crisis going on. And you say, God, uh, uh, will you heal me? But, but this is what Scripture says, or, or maybe what you should say is, by his stripes, I was healed. Yeah. Scripture says, by his stripes, we were healed. And you know, because it says we were healed, this is a little just insight into me. I never pray just for me whenever I pray about healing. Because it says we were healed, I always include others, especially my family, in any praying I do for the sick. Because the Bible says, by his stripes we were healed. So he must be, he's always talking about us. So when you pray for, pray for yourself, make it an us prayer. It's more powerful. It's just, just a little insight. The Bible says we have the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead living in us. See, here, here's the deal. Don't start by trying to move towards victory. Because you already have the victory. It's easier to receive it having it than it is trying to receive it by going to get it. I, I could go more into that, but, but maybe in a moment, if I have time. You don't need God to respond to you. Come on. You need to respond to God. That's why I think the sign's so good. You got this. Of course you do, because God gave it to you. What, what do you mean? What do I have? Well, everything that pertains unto life and godliness? You know, just that stuff. How far does that go? Well, you know, if you want to limit it, you can. I just don't feel like I should. Um, it's so powerful to think that truth is you don't need God to respond to you. You need to respond to God. So many Christians don't understand that principle, and so many people don't walk in that you got this because of Jesus. So in other words, in regards to healing, proper way to handle it is instead of, you know, oh God, oh God, oh God, would you, would you, would you, do what the Bible says. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Come on. So what do you do? I speak death to the sickness. I command you to get out of my body. This is the temple of the living God. The scripture says, by his stripes, we were healed. And if it says we were healed, then we are. Sickness, you don't have a right to stay here. you got to go. And so I got this. Why? Because God gave me the truth of his word. 
and everything I need in Jesus. By his stripes we were healed, who bore our, our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. This is what I would call the past tense of the gospel. Very important, the past tense of the gospel. Uh, could I get somebody to, let me see, what could you, could you, could you give me that sign, please? Paige is helping me out here, everybody. She's going to give me the sign back I threw on the ground. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Paige, would you give me that sign, please? Paige, would you give me that sign, please? There's... Paige, would you give me the sign, please? There's no sign down there, Paige. I, I want you to give me the sign that I asked for originally. Would you please give me the sign? How does it feel... I mean, Paige has nothing to say to that. <laughs> it's like, the guy's crazy. I don't know what to do. He's trying to ask me for a sign that doesn't exist, and he's got it under his arm. Why does he keep asking me for it? Yeah. Right. Why do we? Why do we keep asking God for what he's already given us? Instead of asking God, what, what, instead of asking Paige for the sign, I should, should have been saying to Paige, thanks for giving me the sign. That's incredible, Paige. I'm so blessed that you, you, you made the effort, got up. She's wearing a headset and all this stuff and you know, surgical mask and all. You know. Her feet are tied together. No, no, they're not. She made the effort to come up and do it for me. I should be grateful. That's the response that we need to have to the things that we need that God has already promised and told us we have them. Right now, I am not looking for healing over there. God gave me healing right here. And so what do I do? I thank him for my healing. I thank him for, you, you got a financial thing going? Now, just, let's, let's say it's relational. Now, I get that. You pray a little bit different in a relational situation because if I'm praying about my relationship with, you know, Pastor Brian or somebody, I, I, they're uh, their own person. I can't, I can't just... I got that. I'm going to make them different. That doesn't work that way. And I get there might be a lot different type of praying in a situation like that. God, I just pray that you'd open up Pastor Brian's heart. He is so mean, Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. That's not true. <laughs> open his heart. If, if the way that I hurt him, I pray that that, that, that would heal in him. And, and yeah, it isn't like you will never ask God to move again in your life. You will. But stop asking him to move in the areas he's already moved. And start thanking him in the areas that he's already moved. And if you'll get that truth, you got this. If you don't get that truth, it'll, you'll struggle a little bit more. What's wild about this is if you know you have something, it takes the struggle out of it. A lot of the struggle anyway. It takes out the condemnation. Because God did not give you all things pertaining to life and godliness and the knowledge of Christ because you were perfect. <laughs> he did it because of what Jesus did. So when you just don't do everything perfect, that doesn't mean you lose it. It also takes out the legalistic strivings where if I do this good enough, then God will do it. Wait a minute, God already did it. Not based on your legalistic, get it all right, do it all right. God did it based on Jesus doing it all right and getting it right. You know, it, I, I think it even helps remove doubt. How, Paige, would you give me that sign? I did throw it back down now. So Paige, would you give me that sign? Thank you for that sign, Paige. When I have it, and the scripture says I have it, and that I'm in victory right now. I'm not moving towards victory. I'm in victory. I'm fighting for something I have, not for something I need to go get or I need God to go get for me. See, the truth is God already went and got it for me by his stripes, the stripes on Jesus' back. And, and this is one of the things I do, for example, when I pray. I, say, I, I pray something like this maybe sometime. God, I am not going to let the stripes on Jesus' back be in vain concerning me. 
They are not been wasted on his body. They were, they were there so that I might receive healing. And so I'm fighting for it, and we're, it's not going to be in vain. It's easy. It, there's less doubt when you got it than when you don't have it. You think, and you're looking for it out there. Doubt has so much more power. Um, here's one more verse, and uh, we're almost done. Philemon 1 6. I love this verse. It's been one of my favorite verses ever since I became a Christian. It, it says this that the sharing of your faith may become effective. I thought, wow, that's what I want. I want to have effective faith. And so it says that the sharing, how? The sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. How does your faith become effective? Here's how it happens by your acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So we'll pretend I still had the sign because I'm not going to make Paige get up and get it again. But I thank him for it. I thank him for my... I walk around in my day before the emergencies hit, before the confrontation in the natural hits, saying, thank you, Lord, that because of you, I've got this. You have given me healing. You have given me financial security. You have given me safety. My family has the angels of God given over them to keep them in all their ways, in their pathways life. I live my life knowing and believing those things are mine. And it's just a, a far more healthy way of living. I mean, even like, you know, we do that. God, be with me this week. I said, just check that for a minute. Did he say he'd never leave you nor forsake you? I think he did. Instead of saying, God, be with me this week. It's almost like, again, Paige, would you give me the sign and I have the sign? It feels a little weird. We've got to see this from a heavenly perspective. God, I want to thank you that you never leave me nor forsake me. I acknowledge the good things that I have in you in Christ Jesus. Thanks for being there. Thanks for helping me. Now, this, this could go on a lot of different levels, and if, if you're having a hard time getting your mind around this, do, do this just for a second. We won't take much time on this, but think about it this way. Think about it instead like TV if we took a TV and set it up, and we've got, these could become TVs, these screens behind me here. But if we took a TV and set it up here, and we turned it on, we could watch TV, right? Why? Because there are TV signals in this room all the time, 24 hours a day. They're here. You can't see them unless you turn the TV on. See, we can, we can get our minds around this in the natural. Yeah, of course that works that way, Pastor Dan. I got a radio. I turn it on, the radio comes on. Well, how? Because the signals are there all the time. You can't see them. You can't smell them. You can't feel them, but they're there. Why can't we do this with the things of God? I believe we can. All you need is Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you've got this. But that brings me to this thought. What if you don't have Jesus? What if he's not the center of your life? What if, like me, for many years, I believed Jesus existed, I believe he died on the cross, but I'd never really committed my heart and life to him? Here's the crazy part. Take this really, this is crazy town for some people, but we're gonna go there. 1 John 2.2 2 says this, that he is the propitiation, which means the price paid. He is the price paid for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Here's what I want to tell you. You actually don't even need your sins forgiven because he's already paid the price for them to be forgiven. What you need to do is thank him and receive and believe that he did that for you. It's a crazy thought, but the Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. He shed his blood once for the sins of mankind. He's not gonna have to shed his blood again. 
He's not going to have to go back to the cross again. If, if, if you need salvation, what you need to know is he's already paid for it. It's in him. So all you got to do is receive him. And when you receive him, you receive forgiveness of sin. And so I just ask you to bow your heads for a moment, close your eyes. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's a simple prayer. The campus is here in your living room, wherever you're watching this. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And what you're going to do is acknowledge, confess. The Bible puts it that way. Confess that Jesus is Lord. And uh, believe that God raised him from the dead. And then the Bible says you shall be saved. And, and he already did it 2,000 years ago. But, but isn't it amazing that right now in this room, right now in, in the hearts of every person hearing this, that some of you are sensing God pull on your heart and draw you right now? Why is that? Because he's alive. Because he loves you. Because he wants you in his family. So repeat this prayer after me. And could we all do it together? Father God, thanks for sending Jesus to die on the cross for the sin of the world. The price has already been paid. I believe he did that for me. I believe he rose from the dead. And I want to serve you with my whole heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, come on, let's give it up for these guys. So excited. Those of you that are uh, with a cam- at a campus, we're going to turn it over to the campus pastor. Those of you that are in your home, we've got a few more things to share with you. Just wanted to share a little bit with you about generosity. We are we're really dumbfounded on many levels. Uh, I, you know, if it wasn't for faith in Jesus and knowing that he's got this, it's almost hard to imagine how, how generous people have continued to be. And again, I, I don't know of a better verse to share with you than the ones in Philippians where it says in chapter 1, I thank my God upon my every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine making requests for you with all joy for your partnership in the gospel until the first day until now. Thank you for being so generous. It's enabled us to, to have impact in so many different areas and we're so grateful to be able to do that. We're doing a cool diaper drive right now. Want to see you get on board with that, if at all possible for you. You can go online on our app. Uh, we have a section there that the foster care diaper drive, that's who it's for, for the foster communities in uh, Brevard County. Just go on there. You can actually order from Amazon. They'll ship them right here to the church so that when the time comes, we'll get them out out to the foster organizations that we're working with. They have to be in by July 12th. If you'd rather go out and just buy them, that will work too. Just buy the diapers and then bring them in. What size, you ask? We don't care. We need all sizes. You can see it on on the app if you'd like to know about it, but they just need all sizes of diapers for the foster care. And then all this needs to be done by uh, July 12th. One other way, if you just want to give money, you can text FOSTER to the number that's on the screen, and uh, that's our text to give number, and we would be so honored if you gave that way. Thank you so much. Wow, what an incredible message from Pastor Dan. We can say we got this because God's got us. If you called out to God and prayed to give your life to Christ today, we are so excited for you. This is the greatest decision of your life. But be sure to click that raise your hand button or text Jesus to the number on the screen so we can connect with you and help you find those next steps. You weren't made to do life alone. We're serving our community this week with a blood drive at our Merritt Island campus. It's happening Wednesday, July 8th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Everyone who donates will receive a $10 e-gift card, a t-shirt, and a COVID-19 antibody test. You can register online at eccc.us slash events. And just a reminder, youth camp is coming up soon. So this is a week where students can get connected with each other and with God and really have a lot of fun in the process. Registration is open for 7th to 12th grade students and you can do that at eccc.us events. 
If all of this seems like a lot to remember, don't worry, you can download the East Coast app. It is free and it's a one-stop shop to keep up with events, information, podcasts, and messages, and so much more. So just search for East Coast app in your app store on your mobile device. Thanks for joining us for service. We hope you had a great week. Enjoy this time of reflection with the Lord. Thank you.